Jennifer Flans, executive producer of The Daily Show with Trevor Noah and a seven-time Emmy winner among 15 nominations. Uh, Jennifer, you went through so many transitions with The Daily Show. I wanted to ask you about the most recent one, obviously, going back to having an audience after uh, having no audience for two years at the shows at home and then into studio and then bringing the audience back for for this recent episodes, how much has it changed as it, the daily show from the last time you had an audience to now and how, like, do you think about it differently and stuff? Yeah, it's, it, that's actually a great question. It's really interesting. Um, I, it is surprisingly different than when we left in March, 2020, because we had done two iterations between then and now. So we, we learned so much from just being, uh, the home show that we did with Trevor, which was obviously out of necessity. And we, the audience was super forgiving. So we could just mess around and try things. And then uh, when we went back to the small studio to be COVID safe without an audience, we, again, you know, there's no live audience. So we got to practice and try things that are a little like sillier than I think we would have done in front of a live audience back at, in the before times and uh and so and but some of them worked you know so we brought them with us to the studio in the hopes that the studio audience would be into it um knowing that the home audience was and it, it worked you know but it, it's been really an interesting uh, uh evolution just to see how these things have you know grown and trevor's we really were able to focus on Trevor's strengths um, and take like the DNA of The Daily Show, which we had, you know, 20 somewhat years of before the pandemic. And then in the apartment version of the show, really take that and mesh it together with things that we knew Trevor was really good at. And so we've now been able to evolve the show beyond just, you know, Trevor hosting The Daily Show. Now it really feels like it's Trevor's, you know, iteration of the show. So I'm, I'm glad you, you said that too. I think so also. I mean, like bro, like this is I, to the most broad brush. I'm like, I think when yeah. John Stewart was the host, I love John Stewart so much. Incredibly, you know, known yeah. for his, maybe his cynicism and stuff. And I feel like Trevor comes in and he has, I think it, I feel, I was trying to figure out what it is. And I feel like it's a passion about making people understand the world in a different fashion or making yeah. them understand how the world is, it can be different than it is. And I guess, how do you guys view the show then from that, using that as the, the guidepost with retaining, like you said, the DNA of The Daily Show, but yeah. that slight pivot between the two men, I think is interesting. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because they're very similar and yet very, very different. And I think Trevor has the, um, you know, the ability to come in and look at this all from a very different point of view because he is not from here. He did not grow up here. He didn't grow up with this two political party system. And he really can look at it as an outsider and that in itself, and that, you know, that's been since he got here day one, but that's really helped evolve the show in a lot of ways. And um, whereas, you know, before we, you know, he, he just, kind of enlightened a lot of us that worked there for a long time to being able to look at a lot of the issues from different sides and that in the Trump era and the new you know kind of even more divided country than it was when John was on the show um and by the way at that time I couldn't have imagined anything getting more divided than under Bush but like well here we are um and having somebody that can really shed light on things in a, in a different way as somebody that's come in from the outside and is now, you know, living here for a long time. Um, has just been, it's been really interesting and, and it gives you a certain empathy for both sides of every argument and, and really spills over from government to social issues to, you know, to ev almost every issue we're looking at from every side. And we oftentimes use the room you know in the morning just to hash out and kind of we all take different points of view even if they're not necessarily our own we're always playing devil's advocate and trying to get to the best place uh to represent you know whatever trevor's point of view would be on it that's that's great to hear and i think that comes through in the show the other thing i, I love about the daily show is i feel like for years it was like 
I, you know, a punchline, maybe that young people are getting their news from the daily show. Right. Like I feel like that it's just to generalize it. Now I'm like, yeah. it heartens me because I feel like the daily show does a great job of context, excuse me, contextualizing the news, but also as like almost like an ombudsman for the mainstream media, because I feel like a lot of times Trevor is able to speak truth to power there as well. Do you yeah. guys think of it as like, I mean, do you now think of the show more of a media watchdog even as well as a news outlet than, you, you know, know what I mean? Like, how do you guys think about it? It's so funny. I, I mean, we think about it as comedy first, okay. right? Like it's a comedy show and we want to make jokes um but we do hold ourselves to like a pretty high journalistic standard making sure that everything is fact checked and we are no fake news on our show uh we are you know there's jokes and then we're putting out information and that's that's it um but i would say you know back in the day i used to laugh when people would say oh you know young people get their news from the daily show and be like, oh if you get your news from the daily show you're missing half the jokes we're a parody show whatever and now i just think well at least kids are getting their news from somewhere you know <laughs> like i'm glad it's not just twitter and like you know click headlines so yeah um yeah. A, a, the hope is you know that they watch the daily show or clips of the daily show wherever they're aggravated aggregated on aggregated on uh aggregated online and on social and then watch get interested in the headline or the topic and then go google around for it you know and learn more and that yeah. would be the hope you know is that they then do their own research come up with their own opinions on things but um kind of i'm glad that it's a show that gets you know kid, younger people or whoever interested in yeah. learning about what's going on in the world around them honestly for sure. I, the other, you mentioned that like the digital, I feel like the, the digital aspect of the show is so big and you guys do such a great job of like getting the clips seemingly in front of where people are. Like you mentioned, how does it work? Like, how do you guys handle like breaking news? Like how, like when, uh, like the, you know, when like, uh, the political reports on like, you know, the Supreme court release a, you know, overturning Roe versus Wade or a draft of that, like that happens at like Monday night at like eight o'clock or whatever. How do you guys mobilize from there and make sure you're getting stuff out online immediately versus like, getting it on the show the next day and how does it all work I guess yeah I mean we are constantly I hate to make us all sound like a bunch of losers but we are constantly in contact with each other we are on everything we're on slack we're on email we're on whatsapp we're on text we're on a million chains with each other and that's everyone from like our uh, expansion team which is our social and digital team um as you know it our writers, our producers, our directors, and then, you know, he, Trevor is on most of these chains as well. We're just, and our correspondents, like we're always throwing around, wow, did you see this just happen? And that can be anything from a giant news story that's breaking like the Roe v. Wade leak, or um, just, hey, did you see what Elon Musk just tweeted? Um, so we're a little bit immersed in it, uh, which I always think is very good because I think as, as a person, I would have been, you know, had I not worked at the Daily Show, I would have been a person that, at the office that was by the water cooler being like, did you see this? Did you see this? You know, so at least now I work with a ton of people that say, did you see this? And <laughs> um, and I get, we get to do it together. Um, but, you know, we with specific to a story like uh, that breaks at like an eight o'clock hour, well, we already taped the show for that night, right? That's already hopefully by then finalized it. We're just finishing the edit and it's going out. But we have all of these other ways of reaching our audience now. And so we quickly, you know, will come up with the best tweet or take for that. If it's if it warrants it, sometimes we'll grab one of the correspondents and do a quick video. You know, we make Desi the head of the CDC or something. And um, and you know, I, we did that when the mask mandate changed, I think. Uh, but you know, so there's we have this great cast of you know our news team is amazing so any one of them could step in depending on what point of view we think the joke works best from or trevor um but generally at like a late night thing like that we'll probably just put out a tweet and then uh but immediately start talking about what does the next day look like right like who uh, for who from the news team is best comment on it who uh, what points of view are we representing and actually with a story like the Roe versus Wade leak, what happened was we, you know, I, I immediately said to Trevor, do, do we want to get somebody for tomorrow on the show as a guest? Do we want to talk to somebody? And um, and that oftentimes is the way we'd want to cover a story that's that big is let's talk to an expert. Um, 
but it it was also like, oh, let's give it a beat. Let's wait till the morning, sleep on it and see where this lands because it was a leak. It wasn't a decision, right? So we wanted to see where does this land tomorrow? Uh, and it landed in a very sad place. <laughs> Obviously. And that's when we decided we would, you know, so yeah. I think we brought on Senator Klobuchar that day to speak about it. Mm -hmm. And um, we had already booked Bill Gates, who had plenty to say on it as well. And um, we made sure to use Desi, who's super passionate about the topic and came with a lot of great jokes and tears. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Trevor, you know, covering it with the most um, you know, thoughtful ways to cover it, I think. Yeah, it's incredible. Hearing you talk about it is so great. And I think that's what oh. makes The Daily Show The Daily Show after all these 20 years. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, executive producer of The Daily Show. Thank you. Thanks.